marketing director to American Tackle Company and tournament angler. Today we're going to be talking about some tips and tricks for finesse fishing, plus a rod build that I put together that's a great all-around build for finesse fishing using American Tackle components. It's all coming to you today, but before we get started, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. So the first step in being a successful finesse angler is to have a good finesse combo. This is finesse rod that I built using American Tackle components for a BFL regional event on Lake Lanier just a few months ago. To me, this is just a really good all-purpose finesse rod, and the reason for that is, is the blank that I went with was the Matrix MAP7 blank. Now, its ratio is from 8 to 14 pound test. And what I really like about this rod blank is it's got a really, really good tip it loads up really well, but it's got a good midsection to help me keep those fish pinned and get them in the boat during the fight of the fish. So that's the blank that I went with. You know, we've talked about a lot with the Bushido blank series with American Tackle. That's a great blank series, but to me, this was just a good all around feeling rod. And as soon as I had tested it out and looked at it in our rod lineup, I knew I was excited to put together a finesse rod using it. So I went with the Matrix series. The real seat that I put together with this rod is the CCT Apex ULH reel seat. We have a lot of different reel seats in the CCT lineup, but for this build that I made specifically, I just felt that this Apex reel seat just felt better in my hand. It's very ergonomic. It matches well with the rod, and it feels really, really good when you put that spinning reel in, into the reel seat. Down here, the fighting butt section of the rod, I went with the bottom half of a G2 carbon split grip uh, handle system. I just think it gives it a good overall look, matching up with the carbon fiber look to the Matrix series of rod. The final part of this build that I want to talk about is the guide system that I went with. I went with the MW20 Microwave Guide System. This is the award-winning guide system that we talk about a lot at American Tackle. We're very, very proud of it. And what's unique about the Microwave Guide System is it helps anglers cast further, maintain complete line control during the cast, and honestly, you know, I was really, really impressed once I got to Lake Lanier, even throw like an 8th ounce or 16th ounce bait, just how much further I could cast using this guide system. I've never before in my tournament career been able to cast that far using a finesse rod. So I know that the microwave guide system was the ultimate difference in being able to maximize my cast distance. So just going over this combo again, this is a 7 foot medium light action rod. This is a matrix blank in the American Tackle blank lineup. But then getting down to the reel, this is a 3000 series finesse reel. I use a 3000 series finesse reel in all of my applications. I know some guys like to use the 2500, some guys like to use the 1000. To me, what's best for my fishing, what I recommend to other anglers, is the 3000 series finesse reels. The reason for this is, the 3000 series finesse reel is gonna hold a little bit more line on the spool, but it's also got a bigger spool to that reel. And what that does is it creates a bigger loop on the line when it's coming off of this reel in your cast. So on top of the microwave guide system and having that bigger spool, this is going to help you cast a little bit further, but also creates a lot less line twist throughout the day. Talking about line, what line do I go with? What line do I recommend to anglers? For bass fishing finesse applications, I recommend using braided main line. This is a 10 pound lime green Bushido 8 carrier braid from American Tackle Company. I switched over to using braided mainline about five years ago. Some guys still like to use mono. Some guys are going back to using straight fluorocarbon. I use the braid because it lays better on the reel. It creates less wind knocks throughout the day. And the sensitivity is just overall extremely, extremely good on a finesse rod using a braided mainline. So you can't run straight braid to your finesse bait. You're gonna have to have a leader. 99% of the time, I'm using an eight pound American Tackle Bushido 100% fluorocarbon leader. I'm going to use about 15 to 20 feet of this for my leader material. I'm using a crazy Alberto knot to tie my leader material to my main line. And I, like I said, 99% of the time I'm using 8 pound test. I like 8 pound test because it's small in diameter. It helps me work the smaller baits a little bit better. And overall it's just performed really, really good throughout my fishing career as a tournament angler or just recreationally use an eight pound test. Some guys like to use 10 and I'll use 10 when I'm, use, when I'm fishing brush piles or a little bit more rocky conditions where there's gonna be a little bit more abrasion to the line, I'll use a 10 pound test. But for super, super clear water, and I almost had to do this at Lake Lanier when the sun came out because of how clear that lake is. 
I know guys out west are using this on Lake Mead, Lake Powell, because of how clear those fisheries are. And then especially in the Great Lakes areas, they're using six pound tests. Again, I recommend American Tackle Bushido 100% fluorocarbon. Great overall line. You can find it on our website at americantackleanglerproducts.com. And the six pound test is a little bit better in clear water conditions because it just, the line diameter is a little bit smaller so the fish can't see it. And smallmouth especially, they're very, very picky when it comes to feeding on finesse style baits because they can see that line going through the water column. So you wanna have something a little bit smaller so they can't see it. I've even heard of guys throwing four pound tests. That's a little crazy for me, so I'm gonna to stick to six and eight most of the time with the exception of throwing at brush piles or in rocking conditions that I'm above up to 10. So now that we have the rod, the reel, the line, what kind of baits do we need to throw to be a successful finesse angler? So I have several different baits set out here in front of me that I use throughout the different lakes that I'm fishing around the country, either tournament angler, tournament fishing, or as just recreationally fishing. The first bait that I always pick up with a finesse rod is a wacky worm. This little bait is absolutely dynamite. When you need to get bites, when you need to have fun, or you need to fill the limit before you go to weigh in, pick up the wacky worm. This is a weightless technique. I usually pick up the American Tackle stick figure. We have several different colors available to anglers for several different water conditions. I like to start out with as clear of a bait as I can get away with. So your natural colors like your watermelon red, watermelon candy, straight watermelon, whatever it may be. Down here in Florida, we have a little bit more dingy water. So then I'll pick up like June Bug or Black and Blue. But rigging it wacky style, that's just taking a little one ounce circle hook like I have here, rigging it directly in the middle of the bait. Now when you throw this bait out of here, it's actually going to fall through the water column very, very slowly. It's going to have that kind of like dance motion as it's going through the water column. It just kind of mimics a dying bait fish, perch, crawfish. The fish just really like to fall in the action of this bait and they really can't resist it. So you're going to catch a lot of fish using this technique. The second type of bait, second technique I like to throw is a shaky head. This has caught fish for anglers from coast to coast for a number of years. It's very, very basic when you're talking about finesse fishing. This is probably something that everybody's got in their tackle arsenal. If they don't, they should. So when I'm throwing a shaky head, I start out with a do-it mold shaky head that I pour myself, and I try to go with the lightest weight I can get away with. So I'll start out with an eighth ounce shaky head. If I'm fishing a little bit deeper water, such as 15 or above, I'll go to a quarter. In some situations, like on Kentucky Lake, or deep ledge lakes, I'll even pick up a half ounce football head jig, I'll take the skirt off of it, and I'll work, rig a big worm on it, like a shaky head, and just drag that uh, across the bottom. It's caught a number of fish for me, I know it'll work for you, um, it, it's very, very basic, there's no wrong way to fish a shaky head. I like to rig it Texas style with the hook buried into the worm, some guys like going all the way through the worm and exposing it on the other side. Uh, but again, start out with your natural colors, such as your green pumpkin, your watermelon red, straight watermelon. And if the water gets dirty on you, go to a June bug, black and blue. But you want to hop this bit, you want to drag it, you can skip it under docks. There's really just no wrong way to fish a shaky head. I want to talk about the baits that have kind of come on strong in the last few years. A drop shot. This is actually the bait that, or technique that I caught all my fish on at Lake Lanier for that BFL Regional. A drop shot is basically uh, a worm Texas rigged on a hook or nose hooked on a, a nose hooked on a hook that's going to suspend above a weight. So what you want to do is when you're tying your leader on, again use an eight pound American Tackle Bushido 100% fluorocarbon. You want to tie a palomar knot onto your hook. This is a two watt worm hook. Some guys like to use circle hooks. I use a worm hook just because I can Texas rig that bait. Texas rigging a bait is just going to help you stay a little bit more weedless in the water. And I don't know, when a fish eats this, to me, there's just a lot better hookup ratio. But you want to tie a polymer knot with that hook and then have a pretty good size tag in. Generally, my tag in is going to be anywhere between 6 inches and 12 inches. Sometimes a little bit more when the fish are a little bit more suspended. But the point of that tag in is you want to run it back through the eye of the hook. And then that's how you're going to tie your weight on to the drop shot setup. Keeping it simple, again, I try to use as light a weight as I can. I'll start out with an eighth ounce weight if I'm fishing really, really shallow or I'm throwing a drop shot onto a bed fish. A little bit of a technique there, a little bit of a tip that I want to pass on is drop shotting for bed fish is absolutely phenomenal, but I'll start out with an eighth ounce weight. If I'm fishing anything deeper than six feet, I'll go to a quarter ounce. And typically, a lot of the time, I'm just using a quarter ounce drop shot weight. 
I've used the quarter ounce all the way up to 30, 40 feet sometimes. If I'm going a little bit heavier than that, I typically will throw a different bait, like maybe a jig or something, or a Texas rig worm. But I've even heard of guys using a half ounce weight uh, up in the uh, St. Clair, Lake Champlain, the Great Lakes areas. So that's the drop shot. Really, really effective. Now a bait that a lot of guys still are trying to keep underneath their hat, they're not trying to talk about, but it's starting to come on strong. A lot of bait companies are making bait specifically for this technique, and that's a Ned Rig bait. This is a Ned Rig. This is an eighth ounce Ned head that I pour using Do It Mold products again. And I've got just a little three inch worm on this in green pumpkin. The point of the Ned head is you wanna go as light as possible and you wanna go as small as possible. With Ned fishing, you're trying to mimic a little bait fish or a little predominantly little crawfish on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom that are just kind of scurrying around and, and really this bait shines in extreme cold conditions or extreme heat conditions so when the fish are really really not active it's tough to get bites on lakes in the extreme summer or the extreme winter i typically will pick up a ned rig before i pick up anything else and I will drag it, I will slowly hop it. The point of the matter to get bites with this technique is you want to fish it as slow as possible. Um, some guys back home in Oklahoma where I grew up, they would call it watching the grass grow when they're fishing this technique. So that's just a basic lineup of different finesse baits that you can use. We have a lot of different finesse baits uh, available at American Tackle. If you look at americantackleanglerproducts.com, you will see the different worms and finesse baits that we have applicable to finesse angling. But don't forget, make sure, if you're not a custom rod builder, then I would check out the Wave Army brands of rods. Those are rod brands that use the microwave guide system in a series of rods. If you are a custom rod builder, please check out our website, look at all of our different components that we have available, including these that we mentioned today, to building a custom finesse rod. But most, most importantly, make sure you use a braid mainline. This is the Bushido American Tackle 8 Carrier Braid with a fluorocarbon leader. Again, I can't stress enough how good this leader material is. This is American Tackle Bushido 100% fluorocarbon. Eight pound test, available again on our website. If you have any questions about the techniques that we talked about today, or about the baits or products that we mentioned, visit our website. For angler products, visit americantackleanglerproducts.com. That's where you'll find all of our products available for the, through the Pro Staff program. If you're interested in becoming a rod builder or you are a rod builder and you're interested in American Tackle rod components, visit our website at americantackle.us. All of our products are listed there. You can also find them at your local American Tackle rod component dealer. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that these tips and tricks and techniques help you become a more of a successful angler out on the water. But go ahead, again, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out all of our social media pages for all the newest updates on our products, different sales that we're having, and different exciting news that's going on in American Tackle Company. Be safe out there fishing, and good luck.